Right now, there's a lot of talk about the Mark of the Beast and what it might be, and with good reason. With all of the drastic changes going on around us since the COVID-19 scare began, the world has become almost unrecognizable in most ways. Most churches have been eerily silent about the agenda that's currently playing out right before our eyes. An agenda of totalitarian control fueled by the fear of a virus that may or may not have killed tens of thousands of people just in the U.S. But are the changes we're seeing in government control and hard-handed leadership driving us toward a new world order? If so, is the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast the next step of this path? What exactly is the Mark of the Beast? Is it an RFID chip or mandatory vaccine? Or is it a much larger, reality-changing structure that is now falling into place? Let's take a look. To understand the Mark of the Beast and the Antichrist system, first we have to review the Bible. Revelation 13, 16 through 18 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Remember that in the Bible, your right hand represents your works and deeds, and your forehead represents your thoughts and will. Then, in Revelation 14, 9 through 11, the Bible says, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his right hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. So how are we supposed to know what the mark of the beast is when we're forced to accept it or reject it? How can you possibly warn your loved ones when you're not even sure what to look for yourself? The Beast Systems Many Hollywood movies have shown us an Antichrist figure who forced the entire population of the world to receive a 666 symbol, an RFID chip, or a barcode on their heads or right hands of the willing. This is a fictitious, overly simplistic depiction and is meant to deceive you. Remember, Hollywood is run by a highly Luciferian agenda. Even many so-called Christian movies use just enough scripture to sound like their messages from God, when in reality it's darkness masquerading as light. It is intended to deceive Christian believers with half-truths. When we look at Revelation 13, we see that there are two different Luciferian powers working during the end times. There are two different beasts. The first beast is the beast of the sea. This beast we can associate with the Antichrist system, the system that the world has been living under for hundreds of years. It represents a system of slavery to government, debt, fear, sickness, and oppression. Notice that in Revelation 13, the first beast is not the one that gives the mark of the beast. It's the second beast that causes all of the world to make a decision about the mark of the beast. The second beast is called the beast of the earth. It's a false prophet system of darkness masquerading as light. It represents power to the people, wealth, prosperity, and hope. Circling back to Revelation 13, 11, it says, And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. This is the beast that will deliver the mark. This beast, the beast of the earth, doesn't make its presence widely known to the world until the very end of days. Who do the two beasts represent? 
Revelation 13 shows us that the two different beasts, although separate and distinct, are both derived from the pits of hell. But they have very different agendas. Their agendas can be described in the New Age belief system as dark versus light. Although light may sound like something positive that we want to believe in, remember it's not the truth and the light that comes from Christ. It's a very false light that's meant to deceive us into believing in a different God than our Heavenly Creator. It's a light that, through a false prophet system, promises prosperity and hope but does not point us to the one true God and eternal salvation through the sacrifice of Christ. Although most people believe that the mark of the beast will come from a dark, evil, clearly Luciferian leader that will arise in the end times, the truth is actually very different. The mark of the beast will come from a leader within the second beast system that promises peace on earth and prosperity for all. It will be a deception that will be set up to fool even the most elect in Christ. The transition between the first beast and the second beast is happening right now during the COVID-19 agenda. That's why we need to understand what it is before we become a part of the great deception that now seems to be heading our way. As you look around the world, it's difficult not to notice that the entire economic system of the first beast has begun to crumble before our very eyes. The US dollar, the default world currency, has been watered down to the point of no return with a $6.2 trillion economic stimulus package that goes almost entirely into the hands of the elite. Beyond that, most small businesses have been shut down by force and will never recover, while nearly 40 million Americans are now out of work since the COVID-19 scare began. Where are these people supposed to find jobs when and if the lockdown is ever lifted? The truth is, these things are being done on purpose for two reasons. Number one, to destroy the current economic system while preparing us for the new system, which has not yet been announced. And number two, to make the population rely completely on the new system once it is announced. In other words, without accepting the mark of the beast, it will be nearly impossible to live any semblance of a normal life in the new normal. The truth is, we're not going back to the normal that we knew. The reason is that we are transitioning between the first beast system, the beast of the sea, into the second beast system, the beast of the earth. And there is a solid plan that will soon be announced that will lead the world into the mark of the beast. You may have heard about Nisara. Nisara stands for the National Economic Security and Reformation Act and was introduced into the United States by a man named Dr. Harvey Francis Bernard, a Louisiana graduate in systems philosophy and an engineering consultant and teacher. Dr. Bernard created the Nassara proposal during the late 1980s and early 1990s. He printed a thousand copies of his proposal titled Draining the Swamp, Monetary and Fiscal Policy Reform in 1996 and sent copies to all members of the U.S. Congress, believing it would pass quickly on its merits. Yes, draining the swamp. Sound familiar? Although the mainstream narrative states that the proposal died before gaining any traction, the truth is actually quite different. Nassara was secretly passed by Congress on March 9th of 2000. In fact, Bill Clinton is said to have signed it into law under heavy military duress. Bill Clinton is part of the Dark Cabal, the first beast system. But the U.S. military, which strongly backs the QAnon movement, part of the second beast system, or the Alliance, pushed the Nassara agenda forward under threat. Nassara is the new economic system that will be introduced into the U.S. after the dollar has fully collapsed. Jisara was signed into law in 2015 as part of the Paris Agreement. It is an extension of Nassara and will fuel the new economic reset for the rest of the world. 
If you remember, Trump removed the U.S. from the Paris Agreement in 2019. This wasn't due to climate change. Simply stated, the U.S. doesn't need Jasara because it has Nasara already in place. With a little research on Nasara, you'll see that it's the hope of the new world that the New Age movement is looking for. In fact, even many in the QAnon community have learned about Nasara and are waiting patiently for its announcement. The New Age says that Nasara is a spiritually directed financial program that can be attributed back to Saint Germain. It was designed to provide a new economic system for the world during the time of transition. But where does the money to back Nasara, this new economic system, come from? The idea behind Nasara and a dark to light financial reset began with Saint Germain in 1729. It was then that he began a world trust that all the elite followers of the light have been contributing to for hundreds of years now. The amount of wealth that the Saint Germain World Trust has accumulated is incomprehensible. In fact, the number is so large that it might as well be infinity. Saint Germain's plan was for the World Trust money to be distributed during Christendom's second millennium or the year 2000. That was when he intended for the world to transition from dark to light, from the Piscean Age to the Age of Aquarius, from the first beast in Revelation to the second beast. However, as we got closer to Y2K, the Dark Cabal wasn't yet ready to surrender control of the world. In addition, there were many prophecies that had not yet happened, and the population of the world just wasn't yet prepared for such a large-scale transition. The next plan was to bring forth Nasara on September 11, 2001. However, the Cabal was still not prepared for this transition. And you remember what happened on that day in order to stop the transition from happening. It's thought that the gold to back the economic transition to the St. Germain World Trust and Nasara was stored within the World Trade Center and was stolen by the Cabal at the time of the alleged 9-11 attacks. However, the Alliance has since taken back the wealth. It's believed that it may now be stored in the Global Seed Vault in Svalbard. The transition is happening now. We're now in 2020, experiencing an unprecedented time in world history where the vast majority of the world has been officially shut down. The transition in power from the first beast to the second beast is happening right now. As Q routinely posts, we are moving from dark to light. As Trump famously said, we were in the calm before the storm. Welcome to the storm. Welcome to the transition. But remember, the light that will emerge is a false light pretending to be the real thing. It is not of the Heavenly Father, but rather Lucifer, the angel of light. The coming promise of Nisara and a worldwide economic reset of prosperity for all is a false light that will be the mark of the beast. When the new economic system is announced, all who choose to become a part of it will be forced to make an oath to humanity that will eternally separate them from God in order to become a part of the new system of earthly prosperity and peace offered by Lucifer, a false prosperity and peace. But why would swearing an oath to humanity be a bad thing? In the Bible, James 5.12 tells us, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. In addition, Matthew 5, 34 and 35 says, But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool. Matthew 6, 24 says, Ye cannot serve both God and money. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, 
Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The mark of the beast is the new economic system of prosperity that was laid out by St. Germain and his World Trust so many years ago. It's the false promise of a utopia on earth without the need for the God of heaven. Yes, a physical implant or mark that will allow you to buy and sell will be a requirement of becoming a member of the Mark of the Beast system. But that is only a symptom of what the true mark is, a decision to choose earthly riches over eternal riches. The Mark of the Beast is you deciding to partake in the new wealth of the new world and the light Luciferian system that backs it, rather than the eternal treasures of the one true God and the heaven on earth that he promises us when Christ returns. But why will Nasara be so difficult to say no to? The Great Awakening promised by Trump and Q will be the greatest deception ever perpetrated on mankind. Here is what it will promise through Nasara. Forgive all mortgage, bank debt, and credit card debt due to the cabal's illegal banking and government activities. Eliminate the Federal Reserve System. Abolish income taxes. Abolish the IRS. Create flat rate, non-essential, new items only sales tax revenue to fund the new government. Drastically increase benefits to senior citizens. Return true constitutional law to all citizens and courts. Establish new presidential and congressional elections within 120 days of Nassar's announcement. Create new U.S. Treasury currency, the rainbow currency, one backed by gold, silver, platinum, and other precious metals. End the bankruptcy of the United States initiated by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1933. Stop all special interest groups. Closely monitor the validity of elections. Establish worldwide peace wherein U.S. troops will be brought home from around the world as peace is declared. In alignment with the Constitution, there will be no standing armies and that will be permanently observed. Release enormous sums of money for humanitarian purposes. Enable the release of thousands of suppressed technologies currently being withheld from the public under the guise of national security. This includes free energy devices, anti-gravity devices, and sonic healing machines. 6,000 technologies will be released initially, followed by the release of more than 60,000 more technologies. Initiate the first phase of worldwide prosperity distribution of vast wealth that has been accumulating for hundreds of years, Nasara and Jasara will create an entirely new system of worldwide currency that's fully transparent, backed by gold, not governed by bankers, and runs on the blockchain, an unhackable, ledger-driven accounting of every transaction ever made. This will offer full transparency and privacy and is 100% traceable. Can you see how this will sound like a very good thing and why the New Age and Q followers are so eager for this great awakening? But will you buy into the Mark of the Beast? Who do you trust? Do you trust the fear that the world is pushing down your throat right now? Will you trust the Nasara solution when it's presented to solve all of the world's problems? Mark 10.24 says, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? God is not the God of this material world. The mark of the beast is what will eternally separate you from God because God doesn't promise you earthly riches and material wealth. In fact, he is in direct opposition to it. It's your heart that shows God where your allegiance is. 
Are you focused on him or are you in love with the things of this world? When you're forced to make the decision to take the mark of the beast that will seal your eternal fate, what decision will you make? Jesus faced the same decision. Now it's your turn. When you're making your decision, remember that Lucifer offered him all the kingdoms of the world if he would pledge an oath to him. Matthew 4.9 says, All these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. But in the next verse, Jesus replied, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. We will all be presented with the exact same proposition, and it's coming soon. Right now, the world is perfectly set up for this great deception. When the time comes, will you answer as your neighbor does? Or will you answer as Jesus did?